Hello, Hofstra fans, and welcome to the W. Mason Coach Report with head men's lacrosse coach Seth Tierney. Welcome, Coach. How are you? Steven, thanks for having me. Coach, team's now 2-0 and on the year. 12-9 win over Michigan on Saturday. Give me your overall thoughts on uh, what you saw from your team on uh, the win. Yeah, I, I thought I thought we finished strong. I thought there was a lapse in that second quarter. Um, Michigan, you know, very athletic team, well coached. Uh, I thought our guys played hard. Um, we got to clean up a few things, as I guess every coach would say after every game. Um, but certainly, you know, being 2-0 and is better than being 1-1. and yeah, you kind of just said it there. Uh, what changed after halftime that allowed your team, your defense locked down? You were down 6-3 in the second quarter, uh, and your team just completely flipped the script, came back, and pulled away, really, for a win. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. We, I, I thought halftime went well. I thought, you know, it, coaches sometimes have a tendency to overcoach at halftime. Uh, I, I thought the Coach McEntee, Coach Gorman, Coach Gongas really did a good job at halftime. Then we brought it all together, and it wasn't, wasn't really um, – what we were doing was wrong. It was more of just how we're doing it or finishing it off. Um, they scored a goal on a on a ground ball in front of our net, uh, and the ball kind of bounced over our sticks. We got to have more attention to detail there. We hit a few pipes, so I was you know we were fortunate that we that we caught back up and and tied it up at halftime to make it a 30 minute game. And then uh, you know the third quarter, I thought we came out, we did a decent job. Really, the beginning of the fourth quarter started with a a, a ride from us. We rode it back. It led to a goal. We lost the faceoff, but won the ground ball. That led to a goal. These are all, you know, turnpike plays that that really dictate a game for us. Yeah, your offense gets a lot of the uh, chatter this year. Justin Ryan, yeah. um, Ryan, the second Ryan. Sure. Uh, well, Michael Altman's kind of been like the unsung. I don't want to say hero, but he's kind of done a lot of different things this year so far for your team to really help you be successful. Uh, and then you obviously have Keegan and Eric. Can, can you talk about what that group kind of means to your team right now? Sure. I mean, defensively, we are just like offensively. We're just we're just scratching the surface now of trying to mold these guys. And um, so I, you know, I, although I don't think we played great on either end of the field. Um, the, the defense is starting to come around a little bit, and they're starting to gain their identity. I think if you ever talk to a coach, um, that defensive identity is vital to the success of a season. So um, they'll certainly be challenged this week, and uh, and we'll see what goes on. But Michael Altman's had a great year so far, uh, only two games. But I'm talking about more of being a leader, being comfortable, doing some things, putting some points on the board, covering guys in the middle of the field on the wings of faceoffs. He's really done a nice job. Uh, Eric Keegan. Those guys have come around. Uh, Dominic Pryor has been a, a big, a, a, a big portion of what we're doing here, and uh, and Dylan McDermott. You know, he was a, a mid-year transfer that came in, and he's doing a nice job for us as well. Yeah, and let's get to the offense. Uh, the two Ryan's, Ryan Tierney and Ryan Sheridan, in the last game, a hat trick for Ryan Sheridan and a another career-defining game for Ryan Tierney. Uh, eight points for Ryan Tierney, th a hat trick for Ryan Sheridan. Uh, what did you see from that duo that allowed both of them to be so successful? Yeah, I mean, listen, Ryan. Um, Which one? Ryan Tierney. <laughs> we'll start with, let's get him over with first. He uh, he played well. I mean, his first shot went in, and, and he was starting to feel it, and, and it relaxed the rest of the, the offense um, that we're going to be able to do some things. So <laughs> he did a good job. Excuse me. He did a good job and then in the first half of scoring goals, and then he did a good job of helping other guys score in the second half where he got, I think, most of his assists. Uh, as far as Ryan Sheridan goes, Ryan is just a – he's just a really good lacrosse player. Um knows how to put himself in good spots to, to, to put the ball on the goal or at least shoot it hard. And uh, he had a nice backdoor cut, and Ryan Tierney fed him. Um, he had a couple of step downs where he put the ball away. And uh, so far for, for the young guy, he's done a great job, along with Justin Sykes. He may not have ended up on the, um, on the stat sheet, but he took a couple of good shots. And when, uh, when we first came out, those first two possessions, Michigan – you know, put the long stick on Justin Sykes on the second midfield and Ryan Sheridan on the first midfield. So two freshmen garnered the long stick. It says a little something. Yeah, and uh, back to Ryan Tierney. Uh, first half, you kind of just alluded to four goals in the first half, and then all four of his assists in the second half. Uh, it, was that just a how the game developed, or was he kind of just – the feel for the game, and he felt like the second half was where he needed to start getting others involved. Yeah, I mean, listen, we've, uh, you know, uh, we've always coached Ryan from the point when he was born uh, to be an assist guy. And so I think that even at times he looks for the assist first uh, before he shoots the ball. Um, there are times, you know, clearly he's shooting it. Uh, but I, I will tell you, you know, he, he wants to get his teammates involved. He knows the brand of lacrosse that we would like to play. And uh, 
certainly thrilled. You know, I, I had one to, uh, to to Sheridan. He had one to Michael Altman cutting down the middle. He had that backside great look to uh, to Dylan McIntosh, which was the, the, the alley-oop pass. The alley, alley-oop. Uh, he basically shot it at Dylan McIntosh, and, uh, and Dylan was, you know, did a great job handling that pass and putting it away at the end of a shot clock. So, um, so far, so good. Uh, again, it doesn't. It's not going to get any easy for Ryan or for Hofstra um, because you know people know who he is, and uh, I'm glad that we've got other guys that are that are that are doing a great job. Witt Stopak doing a great job. Dylan McIntosh. All these guys are stepping up. Sterling Audrey played well. So Riley Forte. All those guys. Um, we just uh, we know it's not getting any easier. I, I don't want to steal your next question. I got in trouble last week with that, but we got Villanova coming to town, and uh, they're no joke. Obviously, after yesterday's win over Maryland. Yeah, I got one more question yeah, before yeah. we get to Villanova. Uh, combined four. Uh, weekly awards, three national from uh, both the CAA, uh, U.S. Lacrosse, Inside Lacrosse, U.S. ILA for your uh, Ryans. Uh, obviously, it's not an individual sports team sport, but it is nice to get the attention on your program after uh, strong weeks for both Ryan Sheridan and Ryan Tierney. Yeah, let's talk about Villanova. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, Coach, big one this week. Uh, you got Saturday on LSN against Villanova. A huge win for them yesterday. Uh, and, and this is a team and a rivalry that's turned into a pretty significant rivalry for your team lost 10-9 in overtime last year uh what, what what are your thoughts going into this game against the wildcats it's a real solid test for your program no no question i mean we know look look, look how villanova opened their season we're gonna they're gonna play yale they're gonna play penn state and then they're gonna play maryland right and then they're gonna play us um you know so i take my hat off to coach carrado that is one heck of a uh, at a conference schedule that he's that he built for his team, and uh, and last night uh, he got a, a huge win over Maryland. They played really well. We got a, obviously got a chance to watch it on their stream, and uh, you know they're offensively they got guys that have a will to get to the goal. They're very talented defensively. They can lock you down. Goalie played really well last night. Faced off. I mean, they their first two games they faced off maybe against the best two faceoff guys um, at Yale and Penn State. But last night they faced off well, so they got some extra possessions. And um, we got a bear coming into Shewitt Stadium on Saturday. And uh, what are the keys to victory to uh, come out successful on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think we have to we have to continue the victories. The victory keys are really in, in our court. Um, you know, I told the guys on Monday we, we just need to be we need to continue to grow us and our brand of lacrosse. We're nowhere near what we're going to be like, hopefully, in a month or two as we enter the conference schedule. So this is just another test, another great test um, for us to see where we're at, to see what we need to work on, and uh, and again, hopefully, come out with a victory. It's going to be a, it's going to be a great game. Hopefully, uh, a lot of people here. Yeah, and again, Saturday at two p.m. another. Hofstra Lacrosse doubleheader, which seems to be a recurring theme this year. This time, it's the men's second, uh, 2 p.m. against Villanova. The women are at 11 a.m. against Fairfield. Uh, be there at James M. Short Stadium. For tickets, HofstraTickets.com. Call 516-HOFTIXX or stop by the Hofstra Athletics ticket office in the lobby of the Max Sports Complex. For Seth Tierney, I'm Stephen Gorchov. Thank you for joining us in the W. Mason Coach Report with head men's lacrosse coach, Seth Tierney.